Hey guys, I thought this video might be of interest. I'm trying to keep track of which pages the user visits when using my applications. Applications, plural, I've got multiple applications and I want to send anonymous statistics. Uh, for example, the user visited the index page and then the detail page. Um, the user clicked the share button or the user clicked to buy something. I'm just uh, giving examples. I would like to keep anonymous statistics of those user interactions. And it's possible to track this in Blazor WebAssembly. It's not, it's never going to be perfect. Uh, there's uh, most definitely services that will do do all that work for you and very and way more accurate. For example, the Google Analytics. Um, but the way I would go about this is first of all, let's see, let's. So my applications, my Blazor applications are this Belgian Dogos SPA, single page application. And I have one pet social SPA. That's also a Blazor WebAssembly project. If I take a look at the program, I see there's only one service added as scope. And this, yeah, scoped, I mean, sorry. The, all, all the other services this project and this project uses are shared services in this shared Razor class library. So in here you see more services and in these configure services, you'll see all of those. The one of interest for me is the navigation base service because I know this one is executed on every page. Uh, that's a mistake I made before. I put it, what I'm, I'm about to do, I put it in the alt service, but I noticed only one of these applications actually executes the alt logic. So for some reason that didn't work as expected. So I put this in the navigation based service. Let's have a look. What did I put there? Of course, the session ID. Since this service is at scoped, the session ID should remain the same as long as the user is using the app. Once the user closes the app and reopens it, this will be a new QIT ID. That's why I'm go I said it's not perfect. It's but the point is to keep anonymous stat analytics, anonymous statistics of the user interactions. But we can't really know. Um, yeah, we're not gonna keep track of IP addresses or something. We can't really know whether it's twice the same user that just reopened the app or it's a new user. So that's just why I said it's not perfect, but it's good enough for what I want to do with it. Um, so this session ID, so we have that. And now I would like to send a metric to my backend and store it in the database. So I already did this more or less, but you can, uh, this metrics table and it has an ID that's auto-generated, an entity ID that's for later. That's more like I want to keep track also of which Yeah, entity could be for me a product 
or a service or a uh, what else a park or a a meetup uh, stuff like that so actually just the detail page of some content I'm displaying on my application so it's always nice to know how many users clicked on that certain one or view that certain one. Uh, that's what I want to accomplish. Also, of course, you see app installed. This is happening. I showed you this, I think, in the PWA video. Make sure to check that one out, My one of my previous videos. And so the type of the metric could be app installed, share clicked, if people are actually actively sharing some content. And then I want to also keep track of the page visits. See user ID, that's only if the user is authenticated, we'll see, then it's not, no longer anonym, anonymous. So then, uh, yeah, we can better know the, how many active users we have and all that stuff. Uh, what our active actual users are mostly visiting or mostly using or interacting with. Then the session ID is, as I just explained, is that uh, new GUID, so that newly generated GUID, but that is going to be the same for each session. I'll quickly try to demonstrate it. Well, first, I'm going to empty this. I'm going to just show how I did it in the in one of the previous videos with the about the progressive web apps, the PWAs. When a user installs the application, I want to yeah know that how many users installed it. So, so let me quickly run my projects. First, I'm sorry, I have to, I was already making it. And then I, only then I thought about making a video about it. So let me run my projects. I'm going to run this one. We've got this nice swagger with the metrics endpoint. It looks a bit like this, like you saw in the database. I'm not going to show the entire backend uh, way to build this, but it's not that hard. I'm sure you can do it. It's basically just sending a some data over HTTP from the front end to the back end, and then the back end should save it in the database. And you could decide maybe in your, in, maybe in another database dedicated to metrics or maybe on a blob store, maybe you want to do that. Feel free to choose. But anyway, so we are going to this progressive web app. I see I already installed it, that's my bad. I'm going to delete it and then let me quickly close the browser and reopen it to make sure to make sure I have a new session ID. Let's take a look at the, the local storage. That's where I also yeah you can see that in progressive web app video that's where I store this these values so the session ID and the uh, host URL so if I now refresh this should be a different one yeah it changed but as long as I'm on this page and I just navigate it should be remain the same so I'm going to some detailed pages Let's see. And it just remains the same, so that's good. 
what I wanted to show is when I click this little download button to install the progressive web app then it opens in some kind of yeah it's installed to my desktop but let me check if the yeah, it seems like still the same session ID. So progressive web apps share the same local storage as the uh, browser you downloaded it from. But what I wanted to see is the database. Let me refresh this database. And I have a app installed metric. So the point of this video now is to save a metric each time I navigate to another page. This includes also the index page. So I want to know as well how many people go to the index page. And for that, I'm actually just going to make a component so you could implement it in your app or remove it again if you don't want that specific application to have that feature. For that, I made a, a new component. Let's see, I put it in the folder metrics and I called it track page visits. What I'm basically going to do here is just listen to the out-of-the-box navigation managers on a location changed event. This navigation manager is out-of-the-box Blazor WebAssembly uh, feature. Yeah, so we can use that. We uh, and then we say make an, our own method handle. Let's say location changed, and then we just do uh, private void handle location changed. I think it's going to need event arcs. Yeah, okay, could have just done that. Object sender and location change event arcs. What I also need to do in here is, uh, I'm not sure, is it inject implements? I dispose, disposable, and then Uh, and then we just unregister this method doing minus okay and in here we could uh, send a metric to the to our backend to or to save in our database Let's see, I've already set that stuff up. I made a service, metric service, and in the posts, it's just going to post to my backend with this create metric request. This looks like what you saw in the database, entity ID, the type of the metric, and then tracking request is keeping track of the optional user ID, a session ID, which I showed you. This platform should actually rename this to just URL, but I'm going to do that when I'm not recording anymore because I have to create and change it in the database then as well. The reason why I don't like platform anymore, the initial ID was, oh, I'm just going to store the base URL so I can know which app, which front end uh, the user is on. But for the page visits, of course, we also need, we need to fill 
uh, URL to that page, not just the base URL. So I should change that to a better name, but okay. I'll very quickly show you how the backend handles that. I think I already showed that in the progressive web app video, but let me just show you again and the shared API in my controller and my metrics controller in my post region. Here that create metric request is passed down and the body, I'm mapping it to a mediator command to then execute it, handle it. All that does is of course save it to the database. Let's take a look at that command. So it just inherits from, so it has the same properties as the create metric request, which has the tracking request. And all it does there is save. Yeah, so first we're going to map from this command to the actual metric entity. This metric database entity is a bit similar. It has the exact same properties as this create metric request and as this create metric command since this inherits from it. So we can just map it to the database to a new metric using mediator. I have videos about mediator if you if you're confused about what's going on here instead of manually saying a uh, new metric and then filling each property with each property from this request object we just do it using mediator automatically and then we just add a record to our database this new metric and save it that's all there is to it. Back to the <laughs> to the subject of this video, I would say this is the this is the reason I made this video. And then here we should simply be able to post a metric to our API using the code, of course, the Let's say inject uh, I SPA metrics service. I think I call it like that. And I might as well want the my own navigation service, which let me show you in a bit oops navigation base service navigation i'm just going to call this navigation service oops i'm struggling quickly show you why i implement inject this one too since this has the current uri and the base uri which is mm, actually, like, yeah, I don't actually need this since I'm just filling that based on the navigation manager. So I'll show you, if you say navigation manager, you can just access the current URI or the base URI and more. I also have videos about navigation, if I'm not mistaken, in Blazor WebAssembly, um, so you can check that out as well. I, of course, don't really want to wait on this. Don't want this to block my user experience or anything. So I'm currently going to wrap it in a task.run. run. I'm not sure if that's the best practice. Um, I know there's better ways to do this, of course, uh, better non-blocking ways, 
but I'm going to simply like this for now and I'm just going to say create metric new create metric request and it wants a entity ID I don't have um, no of course not that's not the point of this component uh, let's start with of course the session ID is uh, maybe hmm. I do need the navigation service because I put the session ID in there session ID platform is so now you have two possibilities uh, you can either just use navigation manager this might be the most accurate ones one and then use the URI not the base URI since that's going to be the same for every page it should be the same for every page um pop, 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 type the user ID we don't have but um first to the user ID just put it in there it should be um it's going to be empty I have this user ID in my auth service I also have videos about alt authentication in Blazor WebAssembly and .NET Web API. You can check those out as well. Current user ID, and then finally this platform, which should actually just be the oh no. Sorry, platform is the current URI the page where the user is visiting. The type I forgot is to, it's going to be something like page visit. But I think that's enough since we already know which page it is. We don't really have to make a distinction in here page visit I'm going to add this to my to a constant in my common metric type where my others lie public const oops const string go page visit you know why that entered so in here, metric type, page visit. Okay. Let's implement this component. So now we have this component that's going to, it's actually some, a functional component. Maybe, yeah. But why I do it like this is so I can easily just go to my application, which I want to have some tracking on, and then go to the main layout and just add it at the top. Um, but I will have to import it probably. Don't know if that's a good component name, but anyway, and the imports, of course, I have to add it. Um, it is something like that, but metrics folder. Okay, now that should be good. 
I'm going to rebuild and rerun my apps. Rebuild since this is in this uh, class library, Razor class library. Have to rebuild all the static files. So, run the API, run the single page application. When I see some things are open, I'm going to delete it again. Oops. Delete it. Okay. So the app is back. Let's just refresh. And now, if everything worked right, uh, correctly, we should have some metrics about page visits. Of course, the index page has the base URL, but that's not a problem since the type has this page visit. So I can't confuse it with uh, app installs or anything else. Let's take a look. A refresh. The nothing. Yes, I think my mistake is we are watching location changes within the app. So just refreshing the index page is not really doing anything. So let's say we go to the detail event page and then close it. It should also make one for here. Go to the parks. And let's check the database. It made some metrics. So we're seeing the pages I visited. Only the initial visit of index didn't register. Also, this one, this detail event, I would actually prefer it more to have the I entity ID filled in. Um, but I think I'll have to do that on the page load of that component of that page. So this, there's definitely some things I need to work out, but I think that's Great start. Initially, I thought it might be overkill to really like track every page visit because it's gonna be become a lot for the database. Um, and you see the session ID is the same each time. Let's refresh this one. Oops. That's not good. Let's refresh it. Go to another page and let's check out. Should be another session ID since I refreshed, reloaded the application. So now I'm not actually a unique user, but yeah, that's uh, the best we can do with this simple implementation. What I find most useful, of course, is these app installed metrics. And also when I go to a detail page, like a meetup or something, or when I click the share button on here, things like that. That makes a shared clicked metric. Yes, notice I made a mistake in here. Let me quickly fix that components. Uh, where did I put that share layout? Also in here, I'm making a... Hmm, it's actually on the detail component. Sorry, it's here, create metric method. 
this method is called after I clicked this after I click this button, it's going to notify the parent component with an event callback, and this is calling the create metric, which is basically doing the same, but instead of this base URI, I need to have the current URI. Um, and that's how I would customly create some custom metrics. And um, maybe it's an ID to also on initialized once I once I get the selected event. Notice you can also do this in the in the API in the backend, but then you just have to make sure you pass the session ID since you will know from the session ID that it's the same user, if it's the same session ID, which is making the HTTP calls. So if the, the user clicks on this page, it should do a HTTP call. Um, to the backend to get this content. So you kind of know then that that specific user requested this content. Of course, how I implemented it, which um, um, I, sh I should actually stop the video and not go too deep in this. And here, when I already have the event from the index page, I actually not I'm not fetching, so that's where the user would uh, visit a page, so a, an event detail, but the API wouldn't know about it. So that's why I prefer to keep this in the front end. I'm not going to elaborate more about this. This is a start, I would say. I still have to fine tune it. Uh, as you saw, this is not ideal that I have the entity ID as null. Hmm. Or maybe I no longer need an entity ID. It's also possible since we now have this. This slug or ID. But it would be cool to query from my database all the metrics for, for example, this ID, this entity. Mm. But yeah, that's all for this video. Next videos will be about deploying these projects to Azure and hosting them. It will first be creating the database resource and then publishing the API using the online databases connection string in the app settings. And then the Belgian Dogos SPA once I finished this application, which is almost Ciao.